Alrighty guys, so today I'm gonna show you how to fix lag and don't starve. And this video is going to be covering everything. So I'm going to get from beginning to end how to solve everything that I can possibly think of. I mean, there may be some things I missed, but I'll try and get through everything. So first things first, our very first thing we wanna do, you're gonna wanna come to your settings and this setting right here, lag compensation is going to be set by default to predictive. This setting is awful. I don't know why it's in the game still and it will make your game lag. So you wanna just turn it off, just turn it off and then hit apply right down here. What lag compensation does is it pretends like you're not lagging. So it'll show your character further along than he is on like a, another person's server and it'll make it so you have no idea where your character is and you'll have it where your hits don't register, you'll rubber band, and it's just really obnoxious. It, it's much better to be able to see when you're lagging than for it to lie to you like that. So just turn it to none and that'll help you out a lot. Screen shake I've also seen cause quite a bit of lag, so you're gonna wanna turn that off. Let's talk about some more options that may be able to help you with your lag. So first things first, if you find in the next section that your graphics is being loaded too hard, it's at 100% during the time where it lags, what you're going to look for here is, I'm, I'm looking for it now, where is it at? Small textures. Small textures are lower resolution textures that will run better. So it'll make the game's textures look worse, but they'll run significantly better on your graphics end. If it's not your graphics getting to 100% though, don't turn this on. You're just you're just hurting yourself. Don't don't go ahead and do that. You don't got to worry about that. These other settings here, they really don't matter in terms of your lag. They don't really affect it at all. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is we want to go over to mods here. Uh, we got client mods. So what are we looking at? Okay, this mod, minimap HUD. This mod has a bug where it has a memory leak. So I don't know what causes this, but once in a rare while, it will just start to cause the game to lag by using up all the RAM for no reason. So I would generally just disable this mod and you're going to have a better time. It also will always have an issue if you have another mod on that adds, you know, like extra things to the minimap. So say for instance, I add one that makes it so I can see Beefalo on the minimap. Just turn that mod off and you're going to have a better time because it, with those two mods on together, it will cause a lot of issues. I've also seen some other issues with map mods. I don't know what causes this, but like the wormhole colors one will also cause a memory leak some of the time. So watch out for that with mods. A lot of times mods can cause lag. So you could try turning them off if you're experiencing a lot of lag and that may be a good try for you. Server mods can also cause them, but normally server mods are more prone to crashing the game than they are to lagging the game. So just watch it with mods. Um, that's all I'm saying. Okie dokie. Now getting more into it. So first thing you're going to want to do is pull up your task manager and you're just going to have this open while you play the game for a bit. And then you'll also want to download something called, uh, what's it called? Hardware monitor. So it's just HW monitor. And we'll get those pulled up real quickly here. Okie dokie. So I've got both of these guys open now. You can see here on the screen. So let's go with hardware monitor first. So what you're looking at here is some very, very in-depth data about what is happening with your computer. So what you're going to be looking at here is this number is the most important. So you're looking for this little chip picture right here, and then it'll have whatever your processor's name is next to it. And then you're going down to temperatures. So you want this temperature to be as close to room temperature as possible. If your processor is showing 80 degrees Celsius or more while you're not doing anything, your computer is basically broken and it's overheating at all times. Now, when I look at a computer normally, whether that be, you know, for a family friend or anything like that, almost all of them are just straight up, they have this issue because they never clean their computer out and their computer gets filled with dust and it is just horrendous. This is a laptop. It means that your laptop's gonna eventually just blow itself up by overheating. And the best thing that you can do is probably buy another laptop because there's such a pain to get into. If it's a desktop, you can simply take the screws off, get in there, and then what you'll wanna do is take some compressed air and then just get all the dust out. And this is of course, while it's unplugged, turned off and you know, away. And that 
purely just doing that will actually make your computer run way, way better because when a computer gets hot, it's gotta be able to cool itself down. So what it does for that is I'll show you guys down here. Uh, I got a lot of cores on this thing. Uh, you can see these megahertz here, right? So those numbers will actually get way lower, which is how much faster it can clock itself to be if it's getting too high. So it just clocks itself down so that it makes less heat so that it gets cooler. So yeah, that's just very important there. And you just really wanna make certain that this temperature is cool. And then you also wanna leave this open while you go ahead and you play the game for a bit so you can see and have some time there where it's actually lagging. So you can see here on my task manager, let's just pull this guy over a little bit more. So you can see here, I'm using 26% of my 32 gigs of RAM with uh, OBS being high usage, which is what I'm using to record right now. So what you wanna go to is performance and you wanna do this after you've already done your little test where it's lagging. And you're going to be able to see here, see I have CPU. And you're going to be looking for a spike that's all the way up here at the very top that shows 100% in any one of these categories. So if my memory shows 100%, that's an issue. If my CPU shows 100%, that's an issue. If my disk shows 100%, uh, that's a huge issue. If your disk is showing 100% when you're playing games, you may have a broken hard drive. Uh, Ethernet, this is talking about internet usage. Uh, this, this is not very reliable. I would not worry too much about that. And then you have graphics card too. Yours might just show like the processor also because some processors have a graphics chiplet in it. And you're just looking for one that's all the way up at the top. And that is what is bottlenecking your computer and slowing it down. So if you're seeing that RAM is hitting, say it's eight gigs on your computer and it's just maxing out at the top here when you're playing Don't Starve, that's the reason why it's lagging. So what you could do is say, for instance, uh, find in task manager back here, what's using up the RAM and simply figure out what it is. Say for instance, you have like some background program, like say I have Google Chrome here. It's using up a, a couple gigs of RAM with what I'm seeing here across all of them. So I could just go ahead and close it while I'm playing the game. And that's my simple solution. My other possible solution would be if I have a computer that is upgradable, I could go ahead and add some more RAM to it. That way I don't have to do this. But of course, that costs money. So that's really what you're looking for here. Now, if your issue is that your cave's loading time is really long, I'll help you out with that too. So what causes that is your hard drive is slow. That's, that's your issue there. And that's a real easy solve with an upgrade that you got to swap your computer to a solid state drive. You can get one for a good 30, 40 bucks. That's like a decent size, like 250, 500 gigs. And that will run way, way better than a hard drive. It, it'll make you load like 50 to 100 times faster. And hard drives are basically obsolete at this point for a normal person. You just don't need them. If you're buying a computer, make sure to get an SSD with it. So that's the basics of it, of whatever may be causing your computer to lag. Now, I'll also say, if in game, you know, it's just one point in time that it's lagging when you go by, say for instance, your base has like 600 structures in it and you walk by and suddenly your game's lagging super bad and you can see one of these things shoot up. Your best option, if you're not willing to spend any money, may be to say for instance, pick up items around the base and just consolidate things because more entities on the ground, the slower the game gets. Now, that is the most I can do for you in terms of for free. This is the best I can do for you. So you might need to clean out your computer. You might be able to just see what your issue is here or go, oh, my computer's actually broken because it's getting 100 degrees Celsius on the processor and I cleaned it out just last week. If that's your thing yeah, and you still have a warranty on it, you're gonna need to bring it in. So the next issue you guys may have is only for if you're playing online. So if you're playing solo, you're not gonna have this one. Uh, what it is, is it's ping lag. So what you gotta think about here is ping is how long it takes for your data to go from you to the server, which if it's really far away, that could make it really slow, or it could just be that your internet is being very bad for some reason. So what you wanna look for here is you just wanna come through here and see blah, blah, blah. We got all this and you can see the ping is right here next to this little bar. And that one we can see is 33. So that would be a good choice for us. Isn't there a way to filter by ping? 
Yeah, best connection is our best way to filter. So we can see this is our best server for ping. Now, if you get in game and you're having it where your connection goes from green to red and no one else is having this issue, you're having what's called a ping spike. So it may be that your household is using up all the internet that's coming from the stream. So say for instance, you know, you have six people downloading a movie at once and you're trying to play games, you're probably gonna have a bad time if your internet's slower. Your issue may also be that you have either a broken router, broken modem, or broken internet lines in the ground. So if it's a broken router or modem, what you can do is call up your ISP and these guys are normally pretty happy to help you out. They have plenty of people on that are willing to help you try and diagnose the issue because you're buying this internet service from this company and they want to make certain that they keep getting paid. So they have these great customer service teams in place to make certain that happens. So just call them up and just ask them, you know, what's going on here? Just be like, hey, I'm getting ping spikes. I, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what's happening. And they'll tell you, hey, restart your router, restart your modem. We'll do this. We'll do that. Because sometimes it can be on their end. And they'll try and help you diagnose the issue. Now, if that doesn't fix it afterwards, what you can do is call them up again and Usually they'll help out and you'll go, hey, I restarted my router last time and modem last time and I'm still getting this issue. And they're like, it's definitely not our end. So what you have is a broken modem and router. Those only cost like 30 bucks. It's not a big deal. So you can just buy another one and then the internet for your house is going to be way better. I swear like 80% of people have broken routers and modems in their homes and they have no idea. They do not understand that their internet is just straight up broken because the equipment they have is broken. A modem and a router are a little computer and they do not live past five years. They 100% will break after five years of use. You're not gonna get anything more out of them after that. You have to buy new ones. And people will be using ones that are 15 years old. So just, you know, get a new router, new modem if that's your issue and you're gonna have way better connection to your friends then. Okay, so if nothing else is gonna work for you and you need a new computer, basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go through how I would pick out parts for building a new computer. And this way, if you go to buy a new computer, even if you're buying a pre-build, a laptop, you're going to understand what you're really looking for and you're gonna understand it better after you watch through this. So I'm just gonna go through and put all the parts together and talk through what I'm doing. So we're starting new here. I'll go with, you know, about like a thousand dollar budget here. I haven't been too up to date on the new stuff. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna straight up go for the most popular one here, the 3600. Now, depending on what you need, you may wanna go higher with this. So this is our processor. You can see here it has core count of six. And then the other th metric that you're looking for are the threads. So what we'll do is we'll just go into, and then we got this website here, CPU benchmark on Passmark. And we can see it's got a 17,854, which is a pretty high score. So this is going to be a very good processor and I'm going to add it to compare. So when I'm looking between computers here, say I'm looking between a couple laptops, it's going to say their processor under the specs. And then I'll go up here. And then uh, what I'm going to need to do is actually, I'm just going to search for another one. So let's say my processor, which is definitely probably, I would imagine going to be worse because it's last gen, even though it was very expensive. Uh, see, we got it right here and then we compare it. And then you come over here, you hit the compare button and you can see the difference between the two. So this one is a score of 18,000. This one's a score of 31,000. Now, what you gotta look for with this too is for gaming, the thing that's most important is the single thread rating because most games can only use one core or two cores of your processor and that's how strong each core is. Now, if you look between the two here, this one has six cores, this one has 16 cores. And then on top of that, you'll also see here 12 threads and 32 threads. So how you can imagine that is, is a core is a mouth and then a thread is basically like hands shoveling food into the mouth. That's how you can understand that. So more threads is generally better. Some processors will only have one thread per one core, but I don't think there's any that go over two threads per core. 
Okay, great. Now that we've got that through and you know what you're looking for here, which is basically the single thread rating, and then you're looking to compare that to the price. And then you're also looking for the cores if you're looking to do other things at the same time. So what we're going to do here, just add this, and then it will automatically compare on the site PC Part Picker uh, between uh, the best places to buy this and where the best price is going to be. And you can actually change your location here to wherever you're at, and it'll try and give you the best price for where, wherever you are. Okay, so with this one, with all Ryzen processors, they come with a CPU cooler. I'm 100% certain at least this one does because you can see right here on the side of the box, that is a CPU cooler, which is basically just a piece of metal that you put on top of the processor to cool it off. So we won't need to add a CPU cooler and it's probably not worth the price to buy a better one for this. We can just go with stock. Choose a motherboard. So motherboard, uh, it's not extremely important, but the big things about it are you want to buy a good name brand motherboard because if your motherboard breaks, you're screwed. Generally, if you're looking for a pre-built computer or you're looking at a laptop, you won't even get to see this. It does not matter to you at all. You're basically just watching this to understand how a computer works for this one. So what we'll do here is you can see here, we got our form factor, ATX and micro ATX. So this one's gonna be really small. Everything's gonna be really close. And this one's gonna be a lot bigger for like a full size computer. I do not like building with micro ATX motherboards because everything's really close. Um, it makes your parts heat, all heat each other up. And also motherboards are really sharp. No one ever says this, but when you're putting them in, they'll cut you real bad. Like they can cut your hands up when you're putting them in because there's like some solder on there and such. And you gotta be careful about that because the micro ATX ones are even sharper than the normal ones. So I like to just go by form factor and then we're gonna go by price, lowest to high. So you can see the micro ATX ones can get really cheap, but also they're going to be able to do less things here. You can see memory max, it says here. So that's how much uh, RAM could be in this maximum. And I can only put two sticks of RAM in this at best. Uh, my computer personally, I think has eight slots for RAM and I'm using four currently. So I wouldn't want this. I'd wanna go higher, even with a micro ATX one. You can see this one has 64, so that'd be a little bit better. Some of them also have um, two slots for graphics cards, things like that. You can just add more things on, uh, maybe another slot for an SSD, which we'll talk about later. So what you're looking for here is we're just gonna find the cheapest ATX one. ASRock, uh, ASRock is decent. I generally don't like um, MSI as far as brands go because MSI cheaps out on the sound chip in them, which sometimes can make the sound that comes into your headphones worse. So we're gonna go with this ASRock one that's 90 bucks. Went ahead and added that. And now we're adding memory, and this is just personal choice here, but um, what we're gonna be looking for is the speed here is important. So you want the speed to be higher. That'll just run better up to a certain point. You want about like, I think 3200 is about like the recommended stopping point for Ryzen because you don't get much more after that out of it. And then what you're gonna wanna do is find two sticks that are decent speed and we'll put those in. So these ones right here are too slow. We're just looking a bit higher. Oh, there, we're seeing some 3000s here. 3200 right there. So. Uh, eight gigs of RAM is a decent amount. So what we could do, since the motherboard we chose has a whole bunch of slots, we could actually go with four sets of these. So we could buy two of these to get 16 gigs of RAM, or you could just buy this right now, get eight. And then when you have 40 bucks later, you could go ahead, add eight more. These are really easy. I mean, RAM is super easy to add. You can literally slot it in like a Game Boy card and then you have new RAM in your computer. It's great. So for right now, we'll just add eight gigs. Eight gigs is good for a you know low end gaming computer. If you're going a little bit higher end, I'd highly recommend adding 16. Or if you're doing anything like professional, like Photoshop or Adobe Premiere, you're definitely gonna want more. Now, this part is very important. And those of you who are watching through this, I really want you to pay attention to this because you may be able to just upgrade your computer with this. So this is very important. So your storage. So this would be your hard drive or your solid state drive and extremely important here. 
you are going to want to get an SSD here, which is a solid state drive. It has no moving parts in it and the data transfers extremely quickly on it uh, compared to a hard drive, but hard drives are cheaper. Now, the reason why the data transfer is important is because it makes load times in games significantly faster. And it's also very helpful with video editing if you're doing that, I'll say that too. Uh, so what we'll do is we're gonna click SSD on type here on the left. And these are the types of form factors they come in. So some of them plug in like how RAM does, and you're gonna need to watch it if you're doing an M.2 or PCIe here to see if your motherboard has a slot for that. That's why motherboard is important for what parts you can put in it. And then there's other ones which you can just put in exactly like how a hard drive is. So a lot of old computers and even laptops that are upgradable, you can actually just stuff an SSD in real easy and this is gonna fix so many lag issues. So, so we'll just go find a decent one that's a good size. So basically what we're looking for is a decent capacity, you know, an amount that's big enough that uh, it would hold a normal person over. And we're gonna be looking for a decent side speed. Uh, and then you can also look into this further. You can just Google how fast an SSD is compared to one another. But generally that's a big pricing difference. Although, you know, what you're really looking for here is we're gonna want, uh, how do I do this? Okay, we're gonna set this to be between 640 and 1200. That way you get a, you know, a decent size. So here we got 960. Uh, what am I seeing here? It doesn't show the cache. I'm generally not liking that. This isn't name brand either. SSDs, you would want to buy a name brand because if it breaks, all your data is gone and the non name brand ones normally break quicker. So I always like to find a name brand. Uh, we got Western Digital Green here. That's a uh, name brand. And then also this is a name brand right here. So we're gonna be looking between those two. I would imagine that with both of these being significantly cheaper than all the other ones for their size, that what we're looking at is significantly slower SSDs than what you may see further on. And here's an M.2 one. So make sure to watch for this if you're buying. So we're just gonna add this one right here, the 85 buck one, not gonna worry about it too much. Great, next onto a graphics card because this is going to be a decently high-end computer. Uh, what are we looking for? We want uh, we want kind of a low end here. This is, uh, all the stuff it's showing us is pretty high end. Um, you can see a lot of options here. A lot of these are, they don't even exist anymore. Like you can't buy them new. Some, here's some things to watch out for. So length, if your case is too small, you won't be able to fit the graphics card in. So the graphics card length is pretty important. The TDP is how many watts it uses. So your power supply needs to be bigger. DVI ports, this is just like how many screens you can plug into it. It's the same with HDMI, mini HDMI, and display port, mini display port. Uh, expan expansion slot width, uh, this is a thing with your motherboard. So if you buy a micro ATX, it may not fit if you buy a really big uh, graphics card. Now, what we are looking for is we need a decently fast graphics card that's not too high in the price. So we're gonna look a little bit lower. Hmm. <laughs> Really what I would be looking at is last gen and the new gen's about to come out too. So this is a bit of a weird time to be buying this. So I'm gonna hit 570, 580, 590. And then we'll also hit both of these. And then we'll also be looking for like 1060 on the, on this side. So we'll get these guys all up in there too. And you plug her in. You got pass mark coming up here. We can see a 7,000. This one's generally low because this is, this is our cheapest one on the list. So you're getting what you pay for here. And then we'll also put in, let's say we're comparing it to a GTX 1080 Ti, which is a significantly more expensive graphics card. Here we go. 
go ahead and hit that in the compare. And we can see it. All you're really looking at here is the scores. The scores is what's important. So we can see this one is a 17,500, 7,000 right there. So this one, you know, it's about two and a half times better. And you would just, you know, you could compare it based on the price at that point. So you could say, you know, if I could find a GTX 1080 Ti for 250 bucks and I'm finding this for 130 bucks, this would actually be the better deal. And it also depends on your needs. A 570 is really going to run significantly better than what you would need for Don't Starve Together, but it's not going to be enough for some of the newer games. So we're gonna find like a 580. Our cheapest 580 is right here. And we'll go ahead, add it to the cart. 180 bucks for 580, not too bad. Also, you can find really good deals on graphics cards used. I will say uh, for the lower end ones, for higher end ones, not so much. Great, so these are the main parts. We'll add a power supply. So you'll just want a good and uh, you know brand name here that also has a certification on it. So we want it to be like bronze and up, and we'll just find one here that you know has enough. That one, 80 plus bronze is what we're looking at here. So we want bronze or up for this one. If you're looking at a higher end computer, you may want it to be higher, but that just is basically its energy efficiency. Uh, this is Rosewill. Rosewill is a name brand, but a smaller name brand. We'll go ahead and add it. Great, we got that. And our last thing that we need to add here, these are the only necessity parts for a computer. So you could actually build a computer without a case. Now, I would not recommend that. There's a high chance your computer will get smashed. You will not have a power button if you don't do that. So you just stick a screwdriver between some pins to turn it on. Although I have seen people do it. Um, the, the popular streamer XQC did not have a case on his computer for a long time. I think he ended up breaking it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not very smart. And case is just a matter of airflow and then also how it looks. So you can decide between this yourself. But the Meshify C is my favorite case. It looks great. It's what I've been using on a couple computers now. And if we zoom in here, you can see on the front, it's got this weird design on it that looks kind of cool. But it also is mesh, so the air actually flows through it, which will keep your parts cool, which will keep your computer fast. So we're just going to add that because that's my favorite case. I mean, you can go really cheap on that. It's not super important. Make certain that your case is the right size or you're going to have a bad time. And also, before you go forward, make sure you see the compatibility warnings. And our compatibility warning is some AMD B450 chipset motherboards may need a BIOS update prior to using Matisse CPUs. Upgrading the BIOS may require a different CPU that is supported by older BIOS versions. Now, what that means is uh, the Ryzen 3000 series. So sometimes they don't work with the B450 motherboards, which were, I think for the 2000 series, I, I'm not certain on that and sometimes they just need a quick software update. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to send you one with the software updated on it if you're buying new. But if you're buying a used one, you're gonna probably have a bad time if you don't have an older processor to stick in it real quick while you update it. So it's just telling us that here. And then note, some physical dimension restrictions cannot yet be automatically checked such as CPU cooler and RAM clearance with modules using tall heat spreaders. This is a huge amount of room that it's going to have for this. Mesh 5C is actually like quite massive as far as things go. You gotta worry about that a lot more if you have a smaller case. So make sure to watch out for that. And you'll also see here estimated wattage 337 watts. So before you go forward and buy a power supply, you wanna make certain that you have, you know, at least a hundred watts worth of room in between because the amount it's saying it will output is not necessarily true as that's what it's saying it could output, but its efficiency is not 100%. What this bronze certification means is that it's at least 80%. And then the higher certifications mean it'll be even better than that. So it could be a platinum one might be 95%. I don't know what the actual things are there, but that's basically what you're looking at. And so we can go ahead and then uh, we'll save as my custom build 
for YouTube. So we went ahead, did that, and then we can go ahead down here and hit the buy. And then you hit the buy from Amazon button and that'll hit everything in. And then there's also, I forget how you do this here. Yeah, okay, so if you click on it, it'll actually show you where it thinks the best price is. Now, it's not always 100% accurate, but it will, it will be somewhat accurate. It doesn't check for deals, I'll say that much. So it's telling us Amazon's the best here because it's the one that's in stock and it's the cheapest. That's probably right. There might be a deal out there or something, but it's probably right. Yeah, and that's generally how you build a computer. If you do this, I mean, you're gonna have a way, way better computer. Most people's laptops I see, this would probably be 100, 200 times stronger than that in terms of its performance. So it's, it's yeah, a kind of a weird thing. And that's how you put together a part list and generally building the computer, not very difficult. Unlike what people think, you're just kind of plugging some things in. It's like building Ikea furniture, honestly, very similar. And yeah, that's how you do that. So if you guys liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more.